In this lesson, we're going to learn what a box and whisker plot is and how we construct a box and whisker plot. And before we begin, you know, I want to point out a few key things about a box and whisker plot. First of all, it's a graphic representation of what's called the five number summary. And the five number summary is really, it really consists of the minimum, the maximum, the first quartile, the median, and the third quartile. And this image over here on the right is an example of a of a box and whisker plot and it gives us all the information that we need. So a couple of the key details. First of all, these little lines right here are what are called the whiskers. So that's one of the whiskers and this is one of the whiskers. The box is this rectangular shape right here and that's where it gets its name. And this box consists of the quartiles and the median. So just to summarize and give you the information, right here, this the end of this whisker right here is our minimum value. And then the beginning of the box is our first quartile. And then the middle of the box where this line is, this is our median value or our, our second quartile. And then the end of the box is the third quartile. Now, I know the whisker goes all the way out to here and ends right here, but that's not our maximum value from the data set. The, the maximum value from our data set actually ends up being right here. And the reason this has an asterisk on it is this happens to be an outlier to the data set. And we use a nice formula to actually figure out what the outlier is. And since I used Minitab to produce this graphic, this uh, it generates that, that outlier data point as an asterisk. So this is our, our outlier data point. We'll learn about those later on. But that's our maximum value of the data point. So even though the whisker ends right here, that's not the maximum value. This happens, this this value where it's actually the maximum on this graphic, this is an extreme value. And there's, there's uh, more information that we'll talk about that later on. So now that you see what the, uh, the graphic representation of a box and whisker plot is and you understand where those five number summaries go in and, and make up this, this graph, let's look at an example and let's go through and calculate those five number summaries and then also construct a box and whisker plot. So first off, we have our data set here and, and the very first thing we want to do is it's, our data isn't always going to come into us where it's nice and neat and in order. We're going to want to sort our data first of all because we need to find our maximum and our minimum value and it's easiest if it's sorted and then we also want to find our median. And we should be able to do those without any help. So our minimum value, or our smallest value happens to be right here. That's, this is the value of three, so that's the minimum. And then our maximum is real easy to see. It's the furthest one on the right when we have it sorted from smallest to largest. And this is going to be equal to 11. And our median, if you recall, that's the middle number in a data set. Now we have 11 data points here. And our median, we can simply find that by dividing 11 by 2. And that would be 5.5. If we just round that up to 6, the sixth data point in the set should be our median. And since this is a small data set, you can probably visual, visually see that this is the middle of the data right here. So our median would be this value of 8. And if we counted 6 data points from the beginning, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you would see 8 would be our 6th data point right there. So our median is often represented with an X with a little squiggle over the top of it. So our median happens to be equal to 8. Now to find our quartiles, you can probably look at this and visually see that our quartiles happen to end up right here and right here. It's real easy to see with a small data set. In a bigger data set, we're going to have to do a little bit more work than that to find those. But I'm going to show you how to do that work to find those, those quartiles a little bit easier if we had a bigger data set. So keep that in mind that visually we can see with small data sets where our quartiles are. We can find those usually pretty easy. But what we're going to use is this formula right here and it shows us the location of a percentile. So when we deal with these, the first quartile is really the 25th percentile. So we're going to find the location of the 25th percentile. And this is equal to n plus 1 times the percentile over 100. N stands for the number of data points that we have our, in our set, or also known as our sample size. So we have 11 data points, so we're going to have 11 plus 1. And this is going to be multiplied by 25 over 100, or 25th percentile. So 11 plus 1 is 12. And 12 times 25 over 100, that's really 1 fourth. 12 times 1 fourth, that's going to be 3. So the location of our 25th percentile is our third data point when we have it arranged smallest to largest. So when we look at this and we count over 1, 2, 3, we can see that our first quartile happens to be right here. So this means that Q1 is equal to the value of 5. Now we can do the same thing for the third quartile or the 75th percentile. So L of 75 is equal to 
11 plus 1 times 75 over 100 or 11 plus 1 is 12 and then this is going to be 75 over 100 reduces to 3 fourths and 12 times 3 fourths is 9. So our ninth data point in this sequence would be our third quartile. So when we count over from left to right we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and lo and behold this happens to be our third quartile. So if I label these this is our minimum this is Q1 this is our median right here this is Q3 right here and this is our maximum right there for the data set. So let me go ahead and write that over here on the left. So Q3 is equal to 10. Now we have our five number summary for this data set and now we're ready to start constructing our box and whisker plot. So let me scroll down just a little bit and we have this scale here that's already created. Now a couple things I think that are important whenever we're dealing with a scale is we should always we should always label the scale and since we're dealing with this data set that we're calling X we should label this axis X and then we should look at our values. Our smallest value was 3, so we could start off with 3, but I'm going to start off a little bit to the left of that, so I'm going to start off with 2, and then I'm going to use increments of 1. Now once we have our scale labeled, we want to start putting some markings on there so we can construct our box and whisker plot. And what I like to do is I like to start off with um, just vertical lines to represent where the minimum and the maximum and the quartiles are. So let's start off with the minimum. That happens to be 3. So I'm going to put a vertical line right there. Our next one is our first quartile, which happens at 5. And I'm going to do a slightly longer line. And then our, our next value is our median. And our median happens to take place at 8. So I'm going to do a longer line for that as well. Our third quartile happens at 10. So another longer line for that. Then our maximum happens at 11, and that'll be a shorter line right there. And that way, when I do the long line, short line deal, I can figure out where my box is constructed, and the longer lines is where I'm going to construct my box. So now I just draw those horizontals to connect the ends of my box, and now I have my box done, and then I'm going to draw the whiskers from the box to those shorter vertical lines, and those are going to be my whiskers right there. And I think the last thing that's pretty important on this box and whisker plot is to label it. Label that key information on there. So I'm going to go ahead and label my minimum. This is going to be equal to 3. Our first quartile, Q1, is equal to 5. Our median is equal to 8. Our third quartile is equal to 10. And our maximum is equal to 11. So this is a good graphic representation of that data and you can see the five number summary in a, in a graphic representation which is really nice. In the last, next lesson we'll uh, look at a slightly bigger data set or what happens when we have an even number of data and how we find the locations of those percentiles or those quartiles as well.